What it's really about is making a world computer. It's about scripting with a simple programming language all sorts of transactions between people, companies, whatever, all sorts of exchanges of, of, of information. So, I mean, it's about decentralized voting mechanisms. It's about AIs being able to send data and processing for each other and, and pay each other for their transactions. So, I mean, there's, it's about automating supply chains and, and, and shipping and e-commerce. So, the, there's an, in, 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 in essence, you know, just like computers and the Internet, started with a certain small set of applications and then pervaded almost everything, right? Yeah. It's the same way with blockchain technology. Like, it started with digital money, but the core technology is, is going to pervade almost everything because there's almost no domain of human pursuit that couldn't use, like, security through cryptography, some sort of, you know, participatory decision-making, and then distributed storage of information, right? So, and these things are also valuable for AI, which is how I got into it in the first place. The fact that blockchain began with artificial currencies, to me, is a detail of history, just like the fact, the fact that the internet began as like a nuclear early warning system. These AIs can provide services to outside users. They can be used in the back end of various software products and websites. But the AIs can also outsource services to each other in, in complex patterns. And so that's, that's another level of network, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you need some AIs in there that have a fundamental power of generalization and abstraction like OpenCon mm -hmm. does. But this can then work together with simpler types of AI and they can coordinate together into a network whose intelligence in a way is greater than the sum of the parts. I mean, so you can look at that sort of like how, you know, different organs in the body are networked together. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they each have their own intelligence, but the whole obviously has more co coordinated behavior than the sum of the parts. We started SingularityNet project in 2017 and funded it via an, uh, a token sale, an, an ICO, and we launched the beta version of the platform late February of this year, put some example AI agents on it, and we're now doing developer workshops and working with various various large large enterprises to act, actually use the platform most recently a project with the domino's pizza to use our decentralized blockchain based ai to optimize pizza delivery so this this if opencog is the golden path to agi then singularity net will come out as a way for many opencog agents to you know, rise toward AGI, pulling together contributions from many other AI agents that are good at other specialized kinds of learning. Could be computer vision, time series prediction, whatever it is. On the other hand, if OpenCog is not the best approach, you know, some new AI algorithms come up with this by some 16-year-old coder in his basement in Kazakhstan or somewhere, they can put it on the Singularity net Network. It can provide services to whoever wants it using this decentralized AI marketplace. And we're working on a, a virtual assistant, which is, isn't yet ready for prime time yet, but we, I mean, the aim here is one that actually understands the context underlying its, its interactions rather than just being a, a souped-up chatbot, which is, which is what most of them are now. A bunch of work on life extension biology. I mean, just in case AI works, AI goes comes more slowly. I'm I'm 52. We can use the we can use the AI to make a longevity pill to let me survive till the till the AGI comes about. And we should have some interesting announcements on that soon. We've been looking at DNA data from people age 105 or over, and our AI tools with OpenCog embedded in SingularityNet platform connecting with other bio AI tools, we are discovering some unique patterns about why some people can live, live that long. I mean, how to, how to use that for therapy is, is another question, but we're, we're also looking at using tokenomics and the sort of cryptographic token underlying singularity net to make a, an ecosystem not only of AIs but of people uploading biology data pertinent to their health, health and longevity so that people who upload their biology data into the network, if that data is used to make a discovery that then is a valuable therapy, they can get some compensation from 
from some, some monetary compensation using the cryptographic token for the use that was made of their data. Unlike in, say, 23andMe now, if you have them sequence your, your DNA, they sent you a report of it. They also kept it in their database and sold it all to GlaxoSmithKline, right? We're launching a, a spin-off called Singularity Studio, which is AI for the enterprise. So we're approached by a lot of big companies. I mean, Domino's was one, but there's a lot of other household names. We're working with Ping On Technology, large insurance company in China, and a bunch of other household names I can't disclose yet. But we're working with a lot of big companies who want to use the Singularity Net AI, but they don't necessarily have the internal expertise to. So we're building vertical market-specific products, initially for fintech, then for health tech and, and IoT, and doing some consulting to help big companies integrate these, these products in, into their inf infrastructure. So that's more, you know, how do you bridge the world of corporate IT with this crazy decentralized blockchain-based AI network by a combination of products and, and services. And so, if, yeah, if, if anyone works with a large corporation that's interested in exploring intersection of AI and, and blockchain, you know, now before we mind upload and become superhuman, superhuman super intelligences, yeah, you can uh, email me or, or contact our, 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 our biz dev people. And we're looking at this Singularity Studio enterprise AI company you know, it, it, it's a way of helping drive utilization of the decentralized network. Because any, any platform, which is ultimately what SingularityNet is, it needs, it needs supply and demand, right? The supply is AI developers putting code in there to, to accompany our OpenCog and other code. And it needs demand, which is users, which could be, you know, entrepreneurs or hackers, or it could be large companies who on their own or with the help of, of Singularity Studio use this to give, you know, additional AI firepower to, to, to what they're doing. SingularityNet has launched the beta version of its decentralized, you know, blockchain-based AI marketplace. We did this in late February, but this is... No, no means means our work is done, but it, you know it's a it's a milestone achievement. It means we we have a scalable you know decentralized marketplace for for AIs, and now now we're working on rolling out improvements to the platform, like a fiat to crypto gateway, so you can buy AI services with fiat money and a bunch of other back end improvements. But we're also working on building supply for the network, like re re recruiting. AI developers to put AI into the marketplace and demand for the network, meaning people to want to use e these AI services. And the desire to build demand for the network leads to the other two exciting things that, that, that I, I want to mention. One is Singularity Studio, which is a spin-off company aimed at making vertical market specific AI products for the enterprise, beginning with it with a finance and fintech product, where on the back end the product uses the AI in this in this decentralized network, but on the front end, you know, it meets the precise needs of of customers, in, in this case banks, insurance companies, and, and and fintechs. And this this, you know, from a singular network view, it's a way of driving demand for the AI AI in the network. From the customer's view, it's just a way of getting better AI services where you have a greater diversity of AI methods and more rapid uptake of, of, of new AI methods behind the product. So that's uh, Singularity Studio, which we're spinning off, which is, is being run by Cassio Panacin, who's been collaborating with me on AI for 20 plus years, about two thirds of the time I've, I've been doing it. We've also launched the XLab, the Singularity Net Accelerator, which is aimed at, at fostering tokenized projects of various sorts, leveraging the Singularity Net AI, AI backend. And th there's going to be a bunch of announcements in the coming month or two regarding specific projects to be launched within the Accelerator, leveraging the AI in the Singularity Net network. So, of course, the network can't be driven forever by projects that we spin off or that we accelerate in, a, in our accelerator, but this is a way of sort of kickstarting the thing. And ultimately what we need is a huge number of AI developers putting AI into the platform. 
and a huge diversity of users using the AI in, in the platform. And then this decentralized protocol, you know, should become to AI what, what, what the internet is to, to generic uh, messaging between, between computers or what BitTorrent is for peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. I would much rather see AI be like Linux, Linux or, 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 or BitTorrent and, or Ethereum or Bitcoin, like a decentralized platform that anyone can contribute to and anyone can benefit from with a, just a more, a more heterogeneous value system in it and, and a more, more heterogeneous set of contributors and, and users. So what, what we're doing, there's some resemblance to OpenAI, but the balance is different. So we're spinning off Singularity Studio which is a for-profit company, which is aimed at making a lot of money from providing high-quality AI products and services to large enterprises. And we'll be spinning off a few other projects among the external projects that will be launched in the, in the accelerator. And, you know, these spin-off projects can have narrow goals and optimize toward those narrow goals. Some of them could be for-profit projects that could have an acquisition exit strategy, traditional IPO and STO, right? But on the other hand, the underlying AI fabric, like the core AGI infrastructure, should be decentralized, owned, owned by everyone and no one, and ultimately should have some DAO-type legal and, and ownership structure. And that's different, because what OpenAI is doing is they're putting the bulk of the AGI development in the for-profit, and then the nonprofit is serving more of a of a of a think tank in oversight. So so far, the the tools on the beta version two marketplace. I mean, these are these are either in house or they're developed by other groups that we're pretty close close partners with. So I mean, we've used we've used token based in, incentivization, but it's been more on a on a bespoke basis. Like there's a there's a company called Moza AI, which builds bioinformatics tools to analyze genetics data. And I mean, we've, we've worked with them and they put some genetics AI tools on, on, on the platform. But it, so it's been some in-house and some developed by close partners. And the, really the services on there now, I mean, they're useful. They do, they do valuable things, but they're, they're mostly, you know, ex examples of what, of what the platform can do and what we're going to be launching later this year the, a request for AI portal, which basically has a list of, hey, if you develop this, then we'll reward you with this many tokens. If you develop that, we'll reward you with this many tokens. And then then we're inviting the community to post new requests for AI on, on, on that portal. Like if you, if you want some AI developed, post a request here, you know, post a, uh, a criterion for what does someone have to do to to have their AI be good enough for you, and how many tokens as reward are you willing to give someone for for developing this? And then that that it's a little bit like Kaggle, but it, but uh, but it's it's more flexible in, in what kinds of, uh, of of AI can 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 be can be requested. So that's. That's the next stage, which we're going to get to this fall, which, which we're pretty pretty excited about. I mean, we've been doing things in-house and with close partners because the development tools have been a bit raw. But now that the beta version two is much more mature and easy to use, so with the yeah with the launch of the request for AI portal later this fall, we're gonna we're gonna make a big push to get third-party developers to put stuff on the platform and then that I mean that's at the same time as working with Cisco with PICC which is China's largest insurance company which we have an MOU with and we're working out the contract details now for some special work there and uh, Domino's Pizza who's working with us on optimizing pizza delivery in, in, in Malaysia and Singapore so I mean on the one hand getting corporate customers on board through Singularity Studio and through contracts with specific corporations, getting large corporates on. On the other hand, launching the request for AI portal this, this fall to make a sort of systematic way to guide the token incentivized AI development. I mean, that, that's building demand and supply on the network.
And I mean, that's what we need to do to, to really make this grow. So I mean, uh, our, our big goal in 2018 and 19 was building stuff because the current blockchain tools are a horrifying pain to work with. So like getting, getting a decentralized AI network that actually works is a very hard technical problem. So now our, I mean, there's still loads of more tech development to do, but our big goal for you know this fall and then 2020 is more on the community development side. So we want to come out of 2020 with a bunch of users and a bunch of third-party developers and a sort of flourishing, flourishing ecosystem there. And then that's where you have the conditions for really radical exponential growth over over the, over the few years after that. For sure. Um, well, one of the things that to me is so interesting here is um, these businesses can uh, get very big very fast because of the global nature of them. How do you think about, you know, kind of uh, focusing on one geography or, or jurisdiction versus uh, global expansion uh, from day one or the early days? It's, it's, it's got to be global and we're very global in the first place. I mean, I'm sitting in Hong Kong. Our biggest AI team is in St. Petersburg, Russia. Our, our product development is between St. Petersburg and Bangalore for the, for the core platform. We have, we have a team in Brazil, a team in Ethiopia. And I, I, think, I think that's actually very important to the model overall, because if, if, if you look at what we're trying to do with getting a lot of different AI into the platform, so the supply side, part of what will make our platform successful is that we can take contributions from brilliant AI guys, you know, in Russia, in Mongolia, in India, in Azerbaijan, in, in, in Ghana, in, in Honduras, wherever they are, right? So if you have a brilliant AI developer with a new idea for a new AI algorithm, you know, if you're sitting in Azerbaijan or Honduras or Ghana, you're probably not going to get a job at Google or Facebook or Tencent. I mean, you might, but not many will, right? On the other hand, you can take an AI that you designed and you can put it online in our platform and then you can make money for it. You can earn tokens for it and you can build a reputation for it. So the ability to draw on AI contributions on the supply side from developers all around the planet, that's, that's extremely valuable. And I mean, that, 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 that's something that comes along with being a decentralized network that's, that's, uh, not not tied to a, a very specific you know corporate business model or, or, or jurisdiction and i mean so on, on the on the other hand that naturally will lead to serving customers all around the world because i mean if, if you have a bunch of ai developers in azerbaijan who are contributing ai to the singularity net platform i mean of course the ai they created could be used by large companies or startups anywhere on the planet but there's going to be there's going to be an incentive then for companies in that country to use some of the AI put in the platform by developers in, in, in that country so i think something like this can be global by nature and i mean it in the same way that linux linux has become very global even though the initial developers were located in in mostly northern europe and and, and, and u.s